Hello everyone, my name is Prodesilaos, also known as Prod. In this video, I want to show you the feature of Denote which allows you to reorder its file name components. Remember, Denote at its core is a file naming scheme. And the idea of having a file naming scheme is to have names of files that are predictable and thus make future retrieval, longer term retrieval, easier. And specifically, the denote file naming scheme is designed for this task to be more efficient. And I want to show you how now you can reorder the file name components that denote provides. So what we have here in uh, the buffer above, we have some denote uh, files, uh, files that have been named with the denote file naming scheme. And this can include any file type, okay? So we have a PDF, a JPG, TXT, org, any file, video files, whatever file you want, you just rename it this way. And then you can find it by keyword, by title, uh, signature or identifier. And the identifier by default is the date and time. In the buffer below, I have the user option denote file name components order. And this is the default value over here. It is a list of symbols, and these symbols reference the denote file name components. You don't have to use all the file name components, by the way. That is subject to another user option. The manual goes into further details. No need for me to elaborate on everything related to Denote. The point is that this is the given order. So even if you have all the file name components in place, this is the order they will uh, follow. And we see this order above. So identifier, signature, title, keywords. We have identifier, signature with the equal signs, uh, title with the uh, dash uh, sign, uh, keywords with the underscore, and uh, there you have it. Let's go ahead now and change the file uh, name uh, order, uh, the component order, to something else. Uh, I will change it here. When we change that, any new file that we create, so either that we create uh, from scratch or that we rename an existing file, will follow this order. Let's go and see this in practice. I go here and I will do mx denote, okay? And uh, this is a new file. It is asking me for a title uh, with a new order, whatever. And keywords denote testing like this, okay? And it has created a new file. Uh, I will just save the buffer and kill it. I don't care about the buffer. And up, oh, what did I do here by accident? Uh, let's now go to the bottom of this buffer and see that here is our new file. And we see that unlike the file above, the keywords, you see these red uh, words over there, red colored words, the keywords are right after the identifier, which is exactly what I asked uh, for it to do. So I said, put the identifier, then put the signature, then put the keywords. Of course, because there is no signature here, it put the keywords where they would be. Let's now do mx denote signature, which is a convenience function that calls denote and uses the exi existing prompts as well as the signature prompt. So let's do that, new signature. Let's just say hello, it doesn't matter. And uh, uh, this is another test, okay. And uh, let's do just the testing, no need for two keywords this time. Uh, save, and let's see, we have here sig uh, identifier, signature, keywords, and title, okay? Very good. So now let's go ahead and modify the order. So I will go and modify it to, uh, let's have uh, this here, which will be title, keyword, signature, and identifier, okay? And now what I want to do is retroactively rename all my files so that they, knew, they use the file name component order that I like. So I experimented a bit and I figured out that this is the best for me. It makes the most sense for me. It is looking uh, better or whatever, okay? So I have uh, set the order that I care about. 
And now what I want to do is call this function over here that I have written, and I will also include in the manual of the note, but you will see that fundamentally it's two lines of code, okay? And what we are doing here is we are telling the note that I want you to call, sorry, we are telling Emacs, not the note. We are telling Emacs, I want you to call this command as if I had called it interactively with MX or with a key binding, okay? And for the purposes of this command, okay, I want the variable denote prompts, which is a user option that tells the node what to prompt you for when you create a new file or rename an existing file. For the purposes of this operation, denote prompts is equal to nil. In other words, do not prompt me for anything, which means if we read the documentation, okay, it means that when you perform a renaming operation, retain the value of each file name component, okay? So it won't change anything. All it will do, given what we have here, is apply the new file name component order. So let's see this in practice. I will go and just do it on these two files. And the order I have settled on is title, keyword, signature, identifier, okay? Let's uh, see this in action. I will do mx and then prod uh, denote uh, rename. So here is my command. I call my command and it did the action. And I see here that it performed the operation. I see that it's the title, it's the keywords, it's the signature, and then it's the identifier. Very good. So let's say that after this experiment, I want to go and do a different one. So I will settle on this one with the uh, signatures as the final file name component. Okay, so let's go to the direct buffer. And let's say that I want now to perform this operation on all my files. I am confident that this is what I want. Imagine this is your denote directory. So either you have a flat listing in your denote directory, or if you don't have a flat listing, I will tell you what to do. But let's assume you have a flat listing first. There might be some files you don't want to operate on. So you go over those files and you type M to mark them. And once you have marked those files, you type K to dismiss them from the current listing. They are not deleted. They are simply removed from the current listing. As soon as you type G to generate the DRED buffer again, you will see those files. So now we have the files we want to operate on. So we will type T, the letter T for toggle, to toggle the mark. When you have no marked files, T means mark all the files. So now that we have marked everything, we will invoke that command that I showed you earlier, the custom command that I wrote, and we will call that command and bam, it performed the operation. And we now see that we have, let's see it here, uh, for example, on this file, we have identifier, keywords, title, and signature. And just like that, folks, we got the file name component uh, order to work retroactively on all our files. Now, you may have some directories. Let's go ahead and create a directory here. Uh, um, let's call it a, just a sub -deer. Okay, so like this, we have a directory, and uh, let's put uh, those two files uh, in that uh, directory. Uh, so we don't need to do it with many files, just uh, those will suffice. And if we go here, we see that we have those files. Okay, so now you have a denote directory with subdirectories, which means that you don't have a flat listing to perform the operation outright. But you don't have to worry about that. You can use MX denote dread or denote sort dread. So it's either denote dread or denote sort dread. Okay, it's the same command, it's an alias. So let's do denote sort dread. In this case, I want uh, to match all my files. So it is telling you the regular expression for what files do you want to match? I want all my files. Uh, let's do it by title, the sorting. It really doesn't matter in this case, reverse sort. Uh, no, it really doesn't matter. What matters to us is that we do the operation that we are interested in. You will see that the files with the sub-deer 
are here, right? So we got a flat listing again. So our denote uh, dred command uh, took all the files in the denote directory, matching the search terms, filtered accordingly, and now uh, present here. So what we will do now is we will go here and we will change the order to something that is quite different. One second, please. Somebody is calling me. That is rare, but it happened. So um, we now change the order. So let's mark everything again. Uh, let me see. OK, so we are good. Let's mark everything. And I will do the command that I had before. And uh, let's see what happens. Bam, we got exactly what we asked for, including the changes to the subdir files you see over there, folks. OK? Now, the final thing, when you rename a file using denote, its buffer is modified so that the front matter in the buffer corresponds to uh, what you have done, if you have made any changes. And then denote will not save the buffer by default. You can save it. Um, there is an option that you save it automatically, but by default it doesn't save automatically so that you can review the changes. But when you change many files, you don't want to go through each buffer and save it manually. You want to do mx save some buffers. And let's see the command here and the key binding. Save some buffers, OK? And you do that. Ah, actually, it did save all my buffers. But if there were many buffers that were not saved, you would have to um, uh, do uh, save some buffers and then exclamation mark, which means yes to all. So you do the renaming, as I showed you, and then save all the buffers, and you are uh, good to go. So that's all, uh, folks. I will include my function here. I will include it in the publication that will embed this video on my website, so you can find it from there. And I will also include uh, this information in the Denote manual. Remember that the Denote manual covers everything you need. I write extensive documentation for a reason, and that is to empower you. Furthermore, you see here, code like this is really, really powerful, really flexible, and it is all because of how Denote is implemented. The code base of Denote is designed to be flexible. This is the most flexible thing you can get, okay? And that is the beauty of it. It is truly uh, it is aligned with the spirit, the spirit of Emacs. It is uh, really customizable. That's all uh, for now, folks. Thank you very much for your attention. So take care, and I need to find OBS here. Take care, and uh, goodbye for now. Bye-bye.